Welcome to the Czech Republic. This is Berno and this is Vojta. Vojta, how are you? Hi guys, I'm good. So Vojta is, you work in marketing for FERC guitars. And uh, yeah, so we got in yesterday. Got in, it's hard to keep track because we're like six hours different. We got in at noon here, 6 a.m. our time, and the whole day was just, yeah, I mean, you know how international travel is. It's a bit of a wash, but we're back up and running today. We wandered around today, and now we're driving to the FERC factory. What's the name of the village? Velke Himčice. That. Velke Himčice? Oh boy. Close enough. <laughs> okay, well, uh, here we go. Let's go to, let's go to the FERC factory. There is a smell to guitar factories. If you've been around enough places that build guitars, there's just something about, I don't know, it smells like like a humidor. Yeah, so this building used to be a mill, so here's the millstone, but I'll have to show you the building from the front. It's amazing. We're in this tiny little village, and uh, here's Vojta. Now, welcome to the Czech Republic. I'm Jeremy, I'm the guitar hunter, and this is where Furt guitars are made. Now, this building is amazing. This building started out as a mill in the 1600s, and most recently, in the last 20 years or so, it has become the home of Furt guitars. Now, this place is incredible. Behind you, well, let's start here. This is where we start with raw lumber that goes into the building behind you, and you're gonna see all of this in this video where we turn raw wood into shaped and dimensional lumber that gets dried in that corner, that gets taken over here to be uh, assembled, CNC'd, cut, shaped, then necks and frets are put in, and then it moves upstairs to the second and third floor. The second floor is where amazing stuff happens, and all of this uh, produces some of the best guitars I've ever played in my history of chasing down cool guitars. Now, the biggest thing about Furt guitars that you need to know is that these guitars have an incredible history. In 1981, Frankie Czech uh, Fjörk made his first guitar, and this is, you have to remember, this is during the time of the USSR. This is during the time of communism in which you can't own a business. You can't make things on your own. And so this guitar was made basically underground, and it was really, really great. And then because of that, great guitars always draw people in. They always build a community. And so immediately people wanted him to build more guitars. And from that, he built all of these guitars, and now they just passed 100,000 guitars. It has gone from an underground guitar made for friends to now it is a network of amazing guitars, and I am so proud to be a FERC owner. My Yellow Deluxe was made all in here. So hang on and watch this video, and this video is, we're gonna talk about the three innovations that FERC has brought to guitars that make them just absolutely game-changing. There are three amazing innovations from the finish to their truss rod system to how they voice every single top on every single guitar that they make. It's amazing! Make sure you're subscribed. I'm Jeremy. Let's get into the video. Musician, and it was very hard uh, to get a good instrument at that time when there was a uh, communism 
To create world-class guitars, you have to start with world-class materials. So in this first room, you're gonna see where they are taking back and side sets, they're book matching those, and they are stickering those. So as they build these stacks, these are to control the humidity. The first thing you have to do in building a great guitar is you have to remove extra humidity. And so that's the first round of, of stacking and stickering these uh, guitar tops, is you're going to remove humidity, and there's a, there's a constant humidification system in this room. And the second thing is then they get moved into a proper dry room. This is a much drier, much more precise environment in the back room, and that's where you're really taking it from just green lumber down to proper kiln dried, maybe not kiln dried, but proper dried material, and then they bring them back out so that they can acclimate once again. The idea is that a guitar is a dynamic physics system. Like you and me, this guitar is going to be in, uh, involved in lots of different environments, so you're gonna play these guitars live, you're gonna have them out and about. This entire process helps the lumber that will become a guitar be prepared for all of the environments that you're gonna take it to as a guitar player. You're gonna take it to really hot, really humid shows. You're gonna play it in cool, dry weather. This guitar has to be able to travel where you go because the whole world has to be filled with music. Now in the other room over here, and I'll stay facing this direction, but in the other room is where the tops are actually cut. So once they are dried, they are then glued together, they're jointed, and they are put together in book match tops back and sides. You can see right here, this is one of the most impressive things I've ever seen, this beautiful dance of technology, but also human input. This guitar, the guitar tops get cut, it's about 70 to 90 seconds. We watched a couple while we're standing there. There's this amazing cutter that just follows this exact precise line building out all of the guitar shapes for Furt guitars. This is probably one of the coolest things I've seen. And I've seen a lot of guitar factories and this is an amazing, just, I can just stand there and watch, watch those tops get cut all day. like this video there is more now this I had to cut this video down a whole lot and uh, but there is a really cool extended cut that's going to be made available for patrons and channel members so if you are so inclined for three bucks a month two bucks a month patreon you can go to patreon.com slash guitar hunter and you can also there's a button down below if you're watching this on YouTube there's a button down below that you can join and when you do you will find an extended version of this video and there will also be a much more extended version of the next video to come out which is is a full tour uh, from Peter Furk. And so it's more detail about the whole process of how they make these guitars. So consider becoming a channel member or a patron and you will get to see that video. Okay, so this is how he goes out of the mission. So most of us, if you've watched videos like this, you've seen a three axis. This is a five axis. So in addition to being able to shape the neck roughly, this is able to actually get it down to almost a sanded finish quality with addition, the fifth axis. So you have height depth width, but with this, you can also orient the tool. So then you can make that transition from the flat of the fingerboard into the headstock itself. And so with this, you can put in basically a raw piece of wood that would come out as a shaped neck with contours and shapes. That is, there's this beautiful dance of technology and innovation and human input. It's, this is, there is a precision here that is just unbelievable. So in addition to doing the necks, you can also do the bodies. And so with that, we can pull in like a full, this is a deluxe model. So this would have the belly cut and the arm bevel. And so with both of those, this means that this machine can now do many of the things that normally a person would have to do. Uh, there's also freaking robots. Check this out. So this is, what did you call this? This is a collaborative robot. A collaborative robot. And uh, so with this, this machine is able to see what's going on. It's able to uh, do sanding. And then if a person would have to step in, seeing for whatever reason they have stuff going on, they would be able to come in and the robot will detect that there's a person and it will stop and not hurt the person, damage them, whatever. So this is amazing. There's this constant, relationship between technology and craftsmanship making awesome guitars. Of the innovations that FERC has made that have changed how they make guitars and made them more musical and made them more precise and more reliable is the CNR system. And it first and foremost is a double action truss rod system that allows you to have very precise control over the relief of the neck. Now, 
You don't want a flat guitar neck for a million reasons. In the same way that you don't want a flat top guitar, in order for a guitar neck to work, you need to have enough relief as you come down the neck this way. And so with the CNR system, you're able to get just the perfect amount of relief so that your nut is just a smidge higher than the fifth fret and just a smidge higher than the 12th fret and you have enough relief that you clear all of the frets. The CNR system fundamentally co is comprised of three different pieces. So one, you have the double action truss rod itself. Number two, you have the carbon fiber sleeve which actually protects uh, the truss rod so that you have more pressure and even pressure across the length of the neck. And then all of it is housed in the aluminum housing. All of this produces a system, like I said, that just gives you more control over the tone and the uh, relief of the neck. This, uh, this really does change the game. CNR system, it's a game changer. The second innovation that make Ferks so wonderful to hear, play, and be around is their voicing. Now they voice every guitar top. Every single one, the way that they voice this guitar is that they are looking at the responsiveness, the resonance of each guitar top, and with that they will remove uh, material, they will brace guitars in a specific way to bring the absolute best out of them. Now, some of that is proprietary, and the other part is I'm not, I don't, I, I track most of it, okay? Now they voice every top on every guitar. Now they also voice the back uh, of guitars on the red and the rainbow, which is their top of the line and then basically their custom shop. And with that, they are able to make the absolute most out of a guitar because guitars are a physics system. And it is so important that every bit of energy you put into that guitar through your hands, through your heart and soul comes out of that sound hole. And a lot of times with other, just how guitars get made, they're just kind of every guitar is braced the same regardless of the fact that it is organic material. No two tops are the same. They're, the resonance is just different because we're using a living thing. Speaking of living things, now this top is uh, from a, this is a dread. There's going to be a red alpine spruce top and then this will also be a rosewood back and sides. This is a top that I pulled off this rack back behind me. This is going to make an amazing guitar. Serial number 106903. So in a year, tell me if this is you. So the absolute biggest problem with most guitar finishes is that the companies that make them are making finishes for a whole bunch of other things and the needs for like the finish you need to have on your floors in your kitchen is very different than the finish you want on your guitars and of all guitar brands that I've been around and heard their process no one has paid more attention to what it takes to make a finish that sounds good. So that's the number one priority for FERC is to make a finish that does not take away from the finish of a guitar but adds to it. And with that, the secondary function is that that finish also has to be really strong and really resilient because people like you and me, I don't play my guitar mostly at home. My guitars go with me everywhere I'm going. They go with me camping, I play out at bars, I play at farmer's markets, wherever I am. And those guitars, as much as I try, I still end up bonking them into tabletops, into guitar stands and all kinds of things. So the finish for guitars at FERC is primarily, fundamentally focused on making sure that guitar sounds as good as possible. So these guitars are all getting ready for finish. The finishing system that FERC uses is amazing. There's a freaking robot right over in this room, but number one, it is 10 passes of UV cured lacquer. Now what they do is there's another robot in another room uh, and so the robot is now programmed to perfectly spray and give full coverage to that guitar. Then that guitar body gets moved over into a bay of UV lights and so the UV cured, uh, the UV light cures the finish and makes it harden up. Then it goes back. There are 10 coats of that and even at 10 coats it still works out to 180 microns which is like a little more than a sheet of paper. So it's a very thin finish, it's very resilient, and it's incredibly beautiful. It's, they have a bright shine. Now there are different finish options. There's an open pour finish that's a little more satin. There's a finish on the vintage style guitars that looks more like a hand rub finish. And then there is a full on beautiful high gloss finish. Finishes really matter in the tone of your guitar. And this is amazing. The amount of uh, precision and robotic sorcery that makes this that makes this possible is amazing. I didn't realize that a finish could make a guitar sound so much better.
this is the last room you have to see. This is the full-on showroom for FERC, and it is so incredible. Now, the first thing that you see when you come in here, right up there, FERC! And so the first thing that you're gonna see is this. This is the actual, absolute first FERC guitar ever made. This was made when this was still Czechoslovakia. This was made in secret, and this is just an amazing guitar that started all of this, that is now spun out into a, a huge, amazing guitar company. Now there's also some exciting things that they're doing. They're also showing off some jazz guitars, some specialty, some banjos, some mandolins. But down here is where things get so cool and exciting. Number one, a few years ago they passed 100,000 guitars. And when they did, they created this. This, my friends, is a fur, this is a red master's choice. Now it also is made of a very specific kind of maple on the back and sides. Now this is a, uh, a tree that actually came down here on the property. And so this guitar came from, it grew just over behind the building back here. And so this guitar is made of maple. This is their 100,000th guitar, which I can't believe. I can't imagine how much of an accomplishment that would feel like to make that many guitars. And uh, yeah, so as you move along down this wall, check this out. So this, um, as you get in, this is some of the green and the indigo. I have to tell the camera, look away from that bright window. But yeah, so you have some of the more affordable brands or the affordable lines in the indigo and violet, I believe. And then there's also a green, you start moving into the green, yellow, uh, there's a yellow deluxe just like mine. Right here's a yellow deluxe just like mine. And then you move into, there's a nylon up here. There's also, this is a really cool, this is a vintage level two, an incredible guitar. And then you move around to just more guitars that they're featuring. Uh, one of the most notable is this, this is called the, the Little Jane. This is their travel guitar. The neck is fully detachable. <laughs> That's a wrap on FERC. It's been, what, 36 hours, five countries, uh, little sleep, and just amazing guitars sprinting through the tour here. But what I find with FERC is that I find myself cheering for them. I find myself just in their corner, excited for what they're doing. Whether it's the finishes that make guitars sound better, whether it's the CNR system that gives you more precision control over the truss rods, or whether it's the, the voicing that they do to the tops of guitars that, makes, that make guitars come alive at much more affordable price ranges. Man, I find myself cheering for FERC and I'm so excited. I'm thankful to them uh, for bringing me halfway around the world uh, to see their place and to play their guitars. Thank you, make sure you subscribe. I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. This has been a really great opportunity. All right, see you guys later. Yeah.